Hello fellow maker geeks. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of our Star Wars room build, our Star Wars vacation of our 3D printer lab here at Craft Elements and Make Epic Things. I've really been looking for a, an excuse to completely enclose uh, my upper loft area here in our warehouse. And I've been working for, on this for about two weeks. We framed out the structure, we built additional supports, and we are left with layer zero. So really in theatrical design and theming, whether you're doing a Star Wars room or a haunted house or you know a Broadway musical or a movie set, you're always working with layering. So it's been actually a long time since I've been able to do something like this. Uh, back in the day before I had kids and when I had more time, I used to build haunted attractions. So I'm very, very familiar with, you know, doing highly detailed spaces and creating immersive environments. I'm not a Disney Imagineer, but doing fun projects like this are actually something that anybody can do. When you look at finished projects, whether it be a Star Wars room or, you know, a really detailed movie theater that was themed, it's, get, it's really overwhelming to be like, oh, I can never build something like that. But once you start actually breaking things up into layers and separating those into the steps of the process, it becomes much simpler, uh, definitely more drawn out, but it becomes much easier to process in your head. So layer zero is essentially structure. We're talking about a general shape, structure, color. There's no accents, there's no aging, there's no detail, there's no trinkets, there's no lighting other than this base light that I've installed here in the room. It's really a base layer. So I've kind of fast forwarded through this entire build process because in general, if you're going to be watching this and using it for inspiration, you probably have a bedroom or a closet or a basement that's pre-finished. You're not going to be going and building you know, a dedicated structure and installing wiring and flooring and all that like I did here, uh, creating it out of essentially thin air, floating up you know, 10 feet from the surface service of our warehouse. So let's talk about the story that I'm implementing here in this 110 uh, square foot room. There's obviously a little bit of flexibility here, but in general, this is going to be a lab. It's going to be located on a, probably a rebel starship because we do want to have that aged look, not that pristine, you know, imperial look where everything's nice and clean and new. We definitely want to have a little bit more aging, a little bit more grime. You know, in George Lucas, when he developed Star Wars and they're developing scenes and sets around the galaxy, one of the things that he made sure to tell the set designers is to make it look aged. Yes, this is, you know, high tech stuff, possibly in the distant future, but, this stuff has to look used. It can't be shiny new space. It's gotta be, you know, like the Mos Eisley Cantina where it's a little bit grimy, things are kind of falling apart. You know, that's really the look we're going for here. Again, still a functional space, but we want to make it have a lot of depth, a lot of aging, a lot of weathering. So in this particular space, you know, maybe they're, uh, it's, maybe it's a droid lab. Maybe they're building and testing droids. Essentially, it is a lab on a rebel ship. Now, because this is going to be a functional space for our 3D printers and vacuum formers and, and things like that, uh, basically things that we don't want to get a lot of dust on from the shop below, uh, it does have to be functional. So I've got two uh, kitchen cabinets here that I was using for our 3D printers before when they were exposed. I'm going to age them up. I'm probably going to change the color to like a, a burnt orange. I'll change the style of the door. I'll change the handles. And then in between them, we're going to build a lower... Um, platform, essentially another work uh, table that will have another machine on top of it. And then below it, I'm going to have my uh, resin curing uh, device, what we use with our resin 3D printers. Um, and then to the left and right, the far left and far right, we're going to have some thin vertical shelving that goes all the way up to the ceiling to uh, be able to display antiquities, greebly, you know, whatever weird elements that you might find in this lab, strictly for decor and decoration, not really functional for what we do here at the business. Um, up here, uh, I want to actually implement uh, a fan, an actual working fan. So I've got a bathroom fan, I've got some ductwork, I'm gonna build an enclosure for it, and that fan actually serves a true purpose of drawing air out of the room and throwing it up the exhaust, uh, either out of the warehouse, or um, I can run a line actually outside and vent it all outside. Okay, so that is the plan as of right now. I really hope that you're gonna enjoy uh, coming along on this journey with me as we build this 3D printing lab and makerspace from a galaxy far, far away. Let's get started. 
All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is mount our cabinets in the corners. If you've ever installed kitchen cabinets or cabinets in general, you know that you need to have some spacers off the walls so you can operate the doors without completely destroying your walls. Uh, but more importantly, I'm gonna actually take these apart. I'm gonna take the doors off, I'm gonna add some side panels, and then we're gonna paint these things in a copper uh, orange that we're then gonna dry brush and age and stuff to make it look more space-like. Um, obviously, they probably didn't have shaker style cabinets out there in uh, a galaxy far, far away. So we're gonna go ahead and add some crazy trim. We're gonna build it with a CNC machine or a laser cutter and apply that as a facade to each cabinet door. And this is really something you can do to any cabinets uh, or any door itself. Uh, the same thing is gonna to apply to what we do, the actual masonite uh, entry door here. We're gonna build some trim and we're gonna basically stick it on there and put it in a different color. Once we have our actual center panels on, we can build out the uh, lowered countertop here. We can take that countertop that I had uh, made of acrylic and resin and cut it in half, use it here. And then I will probably end up making a toe kick that'll join all three pieces. All right, let's get started. So the very first thing to do is just take these cabinets apart, taking the top panels off, taking the doors off and leaving the sliders in the hardware in place. Gone and cut some inserts that I can attach to the wall. Um, and basically create spacers so I can attach these cabinets to the inserts and to the wall and uh, just keep them a little bit away from the wall. I'm gonna have to paint those later, but we'll get to that. Um, now the bonding primer that I'm using here is darn expensive. It's like $35 a can, but it's perfect for hard to paint surfaces. So these are like laminate coated uh, doors. Uh, they're like almost like a super fine plastic coating that, like, that goes on these doors. So they're not really something you can just paint over with an acrylic paint. Uh, so I've gone ahead and primered these first before we actually go ahead and paint them. Otherwise, we're just going to get all chipped up. Doing the same thing to the actual cabinet uh, front, front surrounds, the, the front trim. Uh, sanding it up first using a uh, piece of plastic to catch some of that bonding primer and then using a paintbrush to go over the uh, trim to, again, you know, give it something to adhere the actual main paint to because I do want it all to be that same kind of burnt orange color. I went with like a burnt orange color from Sherwin-Williams, kind of a dark muted orange. It's kind of inspired by the Rebel X-Wing uh, accents that you see on some of those ships, uh, as well as a bunch of other sci-fi movies and stuff. It's just oranges and reds seems to be pretty common to use as like spaceship accents for some reason. So I've gone ahead and used that color. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to my table saw and pre-cut the panels that are gonna go on the sides of the cabinets um, to fit in my CNC machine because my CNC machine is four by four and that's a four by eight panel. I'm also gonna go ahead and cut the um, resin coated countertop that I had made a couple of years back for these cabinets. They fit the cabinets and they also fit in my space theme. They've got the kind of a gray and white look to them and they're nice and resilient. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them in half with my track saw and I'll reattach them to the cabinets upstairs. Doing the same thing with those panels I pre-cut uh, just so they fit in the CNC machine. Uh, so I can actually fit them uh, better uh, once I start engraving them. I'm going to bring those panels upstairs and uh, just fit them to the sides of the cabinets, make sure they fit. I'm also going to trace out the toe kick area uh, because I do want to have a continuous toe kick when this project is done. So I'm going to cut that little notch out of the bottom there. So loading up uh, Vectric VCar, pretty standard CNC software. I'm gonna use that stadium oval shape that's pretty much in every single Star Wars movie. And I'm gonna create some fig vents. I'm also adding a Rebel Alliance logo in the middle of that. Probably not something you'd commonly see, uh, you know, blatantly in that Star Wars film, but whatever. I'm just gonna add that to the side panels just so we can really reinforce that Star Wars look. I wish my CNC machine operated this fast, but this is probably like a good 45 minutes to cut both of these panels. And there you go, we've got that fig vent. Uh, on both sides, and then that uh, Rebel Alliance logo. I've pre-spray painted them black to get that accent color before I rolled on the burnt orange. It uh, just saves me having to, you know, paint the actual vents uh, later. I've also done the same thing to the sides of the cabinets, put some black behind them just so when you look through the vent, it's not, you know, that gray cabinet color. And I'm just going to attach some silicone uh, and then attach the panels with um, some finishing nails just to hold them in place while the silicone sets. I'm just spacing them based on the trim piece that I want to put in the front when I actually get further into this project. So going back to V-Carve, I'm going to design the door front trim that's going to go over our shaker style doors. Um, and it was inspired by Disney's Galactic Cruiser. You can see that door over there. It's got the handle and everything kind of works around the handle in kind of an angled way. So I've kind of mimicked that same design. Didn't really have anything other inspiration to work through, but a door, a cabinet door looks like in a Star Wars movie. So that was kind of my inspiration is just using what Disney has kind of come up with. 
Now I've gone ahead and put uh, equipment and provisions in Orabesh uh, in our CNC machine, and we're just gonna cut that with our V-carve bit, uh, which is, I believe, I don't know if it's a 60 degree or a 90 degree bit, but we're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna switch over to our down uh, cut bit to actually cut out our panels. So I've managed to fit four different panels, luckily, on this one sheet, uh, which makes this job a heck of a lot easier. I can just mimic that same design in four different, uh, four different ways on our VCAR software and cut it all at once. Uh, and again, wishing my CNC would work this fast, but this is probably at least an hour and a half uh, to cut all these panels out. My CNC machine uh, does not have a vacuum table, so when I do these designs, uh, you definitely have to use uh, tabs. So these little tabs that are kind of left in place, and that's why at the end of the project or at the end of the cut, I just go over with my, um, my chisel and a hammer or mallet, breaking those tabs carefully, um, and then taking all the panels out from there. And to get rid of the rest of those tabs on the panels, I go take them over to my flush trim router bit on my router table and just kind of go over the entire thing and that takes over any sort of edge. Switching over on, on my router table to a round over bit to round over the face, uh, the front face of each of those trim panels just to make it a little bit more round and, and less squared off. And then a quick sand before I actually go over to painting them. So I'm just gonna go hit the uh, the engraving, the Orbesh engraving with some aluminum colored spray paint, and then just start going over with my dark gray. Uh, and this is actually the same gray that I use in the rest of the warehouse. So it was just kind of paint that I had left over. Uh, I think it's actually called Kendall charcoal, if you're interested in the color. Um, but yeah, just going over the entire panels. And then once that's done in place, I can go back to my cabinet doors, which are already painted orange and I'm going to uh, dis distress them or age them. This is just one technique uh, that I use, and again, this is something I've done a lot in building haunted houses in the past, but I'm using that same gray that I used on the trim panel. I'm watering it down quite a bit just to create kind of a, a tint, essentially. And I'm taking a sponge, uh, which is pretty raggedy, and the ragged, more raggedy your sponge or your paintbrush or whatever, the better look you're going to get. If you take a brand new sponge or a brand new paintbrush that's like perfectly even and not kind of organic, uh, you're not going to get that same effect. It sounds weird, but yeah, if you get like old stuff, old sponges, old cloths, whatever, that's the stuff you want to keep uh, for aging and and uh, antiquing things. So again, just going over the panels in a downward uh, motion because again, the way the panels are oriented. Ideally, that grime and stuff is going to sit down and then fall down, right? It's not going to go horizontally. So we're kind of going vertically in most of the designs. Um, and obviously, the skinnier panels that are going to go horizontally, we're going the opposite direction. Either way, you know, it's kind of a trial and error thing, but we just want them to look kind of, kind of grimy and old, like they've been there maybe for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, washed in a bunch of times, and uh, just looking aged. So this is the first time we can actually see these elements starting to come together and look like something. So this is where I'm going to be mating the, the trim panels that we've already cut with the CNC and painted to the existing cabinet panels that we painted and aged. I aged those cabinet panels first because uh, of the different levels of that shaker style trim. I wanted to make sure I get them, you know, kind of even, not even looking, but I wanted to apply the grime on the base layer before antiquing uh, and aging the trim panels that are going to go on top. So I'm just adhering them with glue. Um, and I'm gonna let them sit for about an hour just so they kind of uh, mate each other before I actually go ahead and mount them. Bringing them upstairs, I can finally start to put these cabinets back together. I'm gonna install the top trim panels first. I'm using um, the same style of door hardware on this top trim panel uh, that was already there. I think the original cabinets had like a, like a brushed steel look where I've got uh, black uh, linear door hardware. Very, very simple, um, but it matches that kind of uh, motif there. So I think it looks really good in black. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing with the bottom panels, except I'm gonna completely change up the the way that the uh, the handles look. My original plan was to use that same linear handle uh, in that same style, but you know, once you actually put it there, it, it just looks out of place. I mean, yes, it's a functional door, but I'm gonna assume that they didn't have that, you know, in the galaxy far, far away. So what is it, I did is actually took a piece of the CNC offcuts from cutting those panels out, which is like a hexagon look, cut that down, put a ridge in it uh, so you can use uh, your fingers to get behind it, and painted it black. It's really that simple. So, you know, basically just using scraps from the CNC offcuts, painting them black and uh, gluing them and attaching them there. And I think that looked really, really good and it fits the exact contour of the doors, which is just an extra detail. 
So once those dried up and uh, the glue is set, I can go reattach my doors and finally get these cabinets uh, back to being cabinets. Now I'm going to start working on the middle section. So the whole idea is to make this look like one big cabinet and we're going to have a lowered uh, desktop or lowered work surface between them. So uh, I'm basically building this middle cabinet in place instead of building a cabinet and bringing it up upstairs. So I'm just going to go do this one by one, uh, building the base first by using some three quarter inch plywood. Um, I've drilled some holes in it and I've run some speaker wire because I do want to have uh, some down lighting uh, down there by the kick panel, which is going to be that Star Wars uh, stadium style kind of look that uh, is frequently uh, found in these movies. And uh, this is my first mistake. I measured twice, cut once. Well, probably not. I measured once, cut twice. <laughs> anyway, so I've got uh, about an inch and a quarter gap there. So I've just cut an extra little piece and stripped it together. A lot of wood glue and a lot of uh, finishing nails later and it looks like one piece and again if this was a kitchen I wouldn't have done that I would have re recut that entire panel but for our purposes I'm pretty sure it's not gonna matter I'm going to go ahead and install some trim pieces uh, about seven inches from the top and that's gonna support our workbench that's gonna go on there after so I've got a piece of MDF that I pre-cut again just fitting it there really really nicely and I'm gonna staple that down with our finishing nailer, and then I'm gonna to get to work on the actual back panel, uh, which I pre-cut on the CNC using the similar designs of the cabinet. So I've really just kind of, you can see there in the video, uh, mimic the designs of the cabinet fronts. And I'm also gonna take some inch and a quarter, I believe, uh, plain trim pieces and just trim out the exposed edges of the plywood. And off camera with the CNC, I created another trim piece using those elongated ovals, uh, pre-painted it with some black spray paint, uh, just like I did with the cabinet sides. And then once I actually get to painting that, um, those, those um, ovals will really, really pop. Doing the same thing up top, adding some one and a quarter inch trim to finish off the uh, plywood edges. So obviously it doesn't look like plywood. And just filling all those little holes with some wood filler that I'm gonna quickly sand down and paint later. Finally, you can start to see the entire cabinet uh, section come together once it's painted that same orange. Uh, once we actually match the antiquing and aging look, it's gonna look really, really slick. Now that the cabinet sections are done, we're gonna get to work on the side towers. So again, Good old Vectric V-Carve, I've designed two panels with some channels and then I've designed some uh, shelves uh, that are kind of like um, cut off on one side. So they're kind of like a polygon look. I didn't want to have plain square or rectangular shelves because that just wouldn't be Star Wars like. Uh, I've actually cut five shelf panels even though I actually only need four. I figured if I ever messed one up or something went wrong with the CNC, I'd have five panels. So I had the wood space so I might as well do it. I'm gonna come knock those out with my uh, chisel and hammer and then just assemble them really quickly on my bench. So really, really important, obviously, to wear safety goggles uh, when you're using a finishing nailer. I have definitely seen uh, finishing, finishing nails miss the wood and go right through and kind of act as a projectile. So always wanna be safe. Here I'm just applying uh, wood glue and setting those shelf pieces into the channels of those panels that we cut with the CNC machine. Uh, just an easy way of, of putting it together and uh, not having to worry about measuring the distance between those panels. Now to make those edges of the plywood panels kind of smooth and ready for paint, I've mixed up some wood glue and water and I'm just going to coat all the edges which gives it kind of a filled in look and it's also common to do this with MDF. So if you're working with MDF when you cut it you've got that kind of like fibrous sandy edge. So it's definitely good to pre-seal that before you paint it, otherwise the, the paint you attach is just gonna go right into it. Now here I'm using my sprayer, and this is the second mistake of the project. 
not judging Mother Nature. Oh, there goes the wind. Oh, wait, wait. For, oh, there goes the other panel. Yeah, so I finally smartened up. I put them side by side, taped them together, had to repair some of the damage that uh, was done by landing on the asphalt. Going back to um, my computer, I'm designing some plexiglass or acrylic uh, panels to go in front of those uh, shelves and basically it just says high voltage and Orbesh. Couldn't think of anything else to put there that made sense. High voltage kind of goes in with the, you know, drawer and repair shop lab theme. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those with my Laguna laser. This is a laser that will do, I believe, 52 inch by 36 inch panels at a time. And I think these pieces are like three inch by 39 inch. All right, so there are my cabinet towers or my shelf towers for really a better definition. Uh, going in, and I'm just attaching them with regular wood screws to these studs in the back of the wall. These cab these towers actually serve two purposes because they're also going to, of course, store items, but they're going to support the upper shelf that's going to go there too. And you can see just adding those acrylic panels just makes it look, you know, more uh, authentic, more Star Wars looking. Instead of just a plain shelf, you've got that kind of acrylic panel in there. Again, it says high voltage and Orabesh. Yeah, so I think they really turned out really good. I did uh, did some aging uh, to them as well before putting them in. Going back to Vectric V-Carve, and I'm going to start designing my fan box. So it's going to have an angled bottom instead of just being squared off at the bottom. I just thought it would look cooler. It doesn't really serve necessarily any purpose. So those are the side panels, and I've got some uh, three-quarter inch wood that I cut on the CNC machine using that design. And I'm just going to start assembling that box. Got my bathroom fan I want to bring to the front of the box. I'm going to raise it a little bit on some three quarter inch plywood and bring it to the front of the box. A, so it's more functional and B, so once you actually look at it through the panel that I'm going to laser cut on the uh, laser machine, uh, you can actually see that fan moving. So speaking of those laser panels, we're going to go ahead and design those two panels. We've got first the bottom panel, which is going to go on the angled section of that box, and then the top panel. The top panel is going to be actually functional because it's got to have vent holes or vent slots in it. So I'm kind of mimicking that stadium oval look, keeping them all the same width. And then I've just added the word exhaust in Orabesh. I don't know why I'm obsessed with labeling everything, but whatever. We've got exhaust and Orabesh going on that panel. So bringing our file over to the Laguna lasers, uh, we're going to go ahead and start cutting uh, those panels first with the bottom angled panel. And the trick is that we're going to leave the oval stadium uh, protective paper in place that's going to help us with painting uh, in just a second here. So there's the one panel and there's the second panel. This one is the uh, exhaust labeled panel, which I've got a fill in at like a 30 or 40 percent thing. So it's really getting deep into the plastic. Uh, so it's going to create that uh, font without having to um, actually paint it. So now I'm going to bring those, both those panels outside, hit them with two different colors. I've got an aluminum color and I've got a primer color. I can then take the paper off uh, and then paint it white. So that white is going to give that sort of translucent look. So it's going to actually be backlit uh, from the lights that are going to be in this box. So you can see removing that paper uh, is a really easy way to do this. You know, cutting those uh, shapes, leaving those, uh, leaving part of the paper on so you can actually create two different colors without having to trace everything out again. So here I am going to mount the fan box. I've installed uh, a little vent and I'm cutting a equal hole in the roof of the room. Uh, so again, we can exhaust any uh, fumes uh, from the, the um, vacuum forming machine as well as my resin printer because it can get a little bit stinky. So this actual fan is creating, you know, an actual vent uh, that I'm going to need. Now I'm going to get to work on the shelves. Uh, cutting the shelves in three layers. So there's actually going to be a thicker shelf, I think, but roughly two and a quarter inch thick in each side. And they're going to be hollow because I'm going to be able to run a speaker wire or a low voltage wire through them. So that's kind of important. I'm leaving the front of the shelf open. So we're essentially creating a channel. And then on this channel is going to be this front trim piece. Uh, again, using that oval stadium shape um, that I'm going to actually put a piece of acrylic behind uh, similar to what I'm going to do in the toe kicks in that room. So here I am uh, layering uh, or building those uh, shelves together, creating a sandwiched area in between that's hollow. And again, we just want that thick profile, but I also want that hollow, hollow area to run cables through without having to see them. 
So it's just adhered them. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that panel that we cut in the CNC machine. And you can see that channel right behind there. That's where our, our lighting strip's gonna go. So it's gonna effectively act as downloading, downlighting towards the um, cabinet area. And it's going to also project light through those uh, stadium uh, cutouts. And of course, just quickly doing um, some wood filler, which we're gonna sand down and off camera, I've painted those gray and antique them a bit. I just wanted to show this part, because they are shelved and I'm gonna be putting stuff on them, I do wanna actually sort of protect them from getting really, really scratched up. Um, so I've got some uh, water-based urethane that I've just gone over them with quickly. And that's just gonna create kind of a, a protective coating, essentially. Uh, it's gonna keep that aging in place and it's just gonna obviously add a little bit of a shine to those shelves because theoretically they're metal, right? Like in, in a perfect world, they're supposed to look like metal. So here I am mounting those shelves and I've just got two little tabs on the side of the fan box to support the one side of the shelf. And of course the long shelves that we built earlier in the video supports the other side of these shelves. Now for the fun part. Oh wait, I probably already said that. There's no such thing as a fun part when you're building these, it's all fun. So I'm finally at the stage where I can start adding the fun lighting effects. Obviously we've got our cabinets done. They're not fully aged yet, but I've got the side towers in and the um, shelving in and of course our fan slash power distribution box. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, this box is not just the exhaust fan, but I've also got uh, AC power to power the fan. That's on a switch on the wall. So if I go and hit the switch, you can see the fan moves and those little light switches that have installed here will turn on. So these light switches are powered by a 12 volt power supply, a 2.5 amp power supply that's there. And then all these little wires coming off will be feeding the 12 volt end of all the speaker wires or low voltage wires running through the room. So I've got, uh, one of the reasons I made this shelf hollow is because I've got a speaker wire running in the middle of there, uh, or essentially 12 volt wire. We're using them as, as 12 volt low voltage wires because we're powering just, you know, extremely low current 12 volt LEDs with them. Um, that goes to that corner and that's gonna be able to power the lights that we're gonna add in the back, the up lighting. So you'll have a bunch of props and stuff there and you'll have the lights up lighting on the back wall. Um, and then we're also going to have a layer of lighting here in this channel through the box back through that channel. Of course, we've got lighting underneath here that we're going to add and all there. So that's one of the keys here is when you're building these rooms, think about it in, in advance where you want your lights to be. If you look at the Star Wars aesthetic, it's very kind of dark and or at least a lot of the, the, you know, the rebel sort of rundown places uh, are kind of dark, dark colors. Um, but there's a lot of lighting, little tiny lights here and there, little accents. So to really get that effect, you need to implement a lot of little lighting effects, right? So I've got four or five different sets of lights that are just gonna do this section. That's not even the rest of the room. That's not this wall. That's not the door. That's not the trim. That's literally just this section. So um, just, just keep that in mind. You're either gonna to wanna to run your speaker wire behind walls, or if you're on a, an upper floor, just a single floor house, you could run through the attic or behind baseboard or under carpet. Just think about that in advance before you start putting all this stuff in place, get those 12 volt low voltage wires where you need to. I've also got little plates that I designed in the CNC that are gonna go on the walls. It just says 12 volt power in Orbesh. Um, and I'm gonna have that on the wall. So in the future, if I wanna add any other thing that's triggered by these 12 volt um, wires or, or 12 volt line here, um, I can easily just plug into that on the wall and not have to run a, a whole extra wire. So in order to facilitate the running of those light lines, the strand lighting in the back, I've actually pre-drilled holes in the box, uh, in my fan box, my power distribution box, so I can still run that same strand all the way. I'm gonna start at one end, go through the box, end at the other. So as I previously mentioned, you know, lighting and lighting effects in these Star Wars builds is like kind of paramount. If you look at the movies, there's it's like a bajillion different light sources. They've got little buttons and little control panels and all this other accent lighting uh, just to make it more futuristic and space age-like, I would assume. Um, so basically, I've gone ahead and done that. I've gone ahead and actually added multiple channels of lighting. I've got the front uh, lighting here that I'm installing, which is just going to be plain white installing it on the toe kick. And this is all 12 volt lighting connected uh, to that fan box. All these wires in this entire room all go back to that fan box, that power supply. So what I've got here is a projection screen I had used for one of my Halloween displays. It's a piece of acrylic uh, with some frosted, uh, frosted sticker on it. So it's gonna be perfect for dispersing light on those uh, stadium oval shaped 
uh, cutouts that we did. So I'm gonna actually adhere these panels to the back of the, the uh, shelves that we built and, uh, and just keep them in place with some tape and some acrylic. So I've got those set. Uh, it did a decent job of dispersing the light, not as much as I would like, but I think it did a, jo a better job on the bottom uh, because I did actually hit the back of those, uh, the acrylic uh, with some white paint to just make it a little bit more uh, faint and a little bit less translucent. So you can see that's definitely a better looking effect than the, the shelving uh, ovals, but that's fine. I think they both look good. Uh, moving on to the actual fan box, we can finally put our panels in place because we've got the lighting installed, we've got all the wiring set up, uh, so really just the bottom panel is going to keep that on place, screwing the bottom panel uh, here now, and then I'm going to go ahead and install the top panel with some uh, wide hex screws. Uh, probably didn't really need to use like these removable screws and receivers, which I did because I don't really plan on removing this panel, but I actually think these wide hex screws kind of add a better aesthetic. You can see that they're kind of beefy. Uh, you can obviously see that they're black. So I think it just looks a little bit better than a regular plain old Robinson or like a Starhead screw. And uh, the very, very last thing in this project is to just to quickly antique and distress and age and weather the center section using the same method we used for the um, front cabinets, basically a tinted uh, watered down paint in a dark gray and just rubbing it everywhere. I've got some spray paint, I've got some black and aluminum spray paint. Just go over really, really quickly. All right, everyone, that is it for episode one of our Star Wars 3D printer and makerspace build. I hope you enjoyed following along with me as we complete the first section of this project. There is a lot more to come, a lot more interesting things to come. So if you wanna see this room completely finished, you need to subscribe here on YouTube to our channel, Make Epic Things, make sure you hit that subscribe button now. And if you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button as well. Now in episode two, we're gonna be focusing on the workstation area, as well as finishing the window into the galaxy. So that's gonna be a very, very cool project. So again, make sure you subscribe to know when this uh, new video is gonna be online. Now, if you have any questions about this build or something that wasn't obvious, maybe you have some suggestions, maybe there's something you would have done different, I wanna hear about it. Make sure you leave a comment in the comments section below, and I will try to reply to all of them. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.